Hi, it's Dr. Saab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the main features of this Mercedes-Benz GLE 450 AMG Line 4MATIC SUV Premium Plus. This video is perfect if you have just bought the new GLE or if you're thinking about buying one. I have done a more in-depth video split in two parts where I show you how to use all of the controls and features. But this video is perfect if you want to quickly learn the main things you need to know before you drive this amazing car. Check out my other video to learn more about the GLE and what specification this car has. To watch that video, check that video out in the top right corner or you can find it in the description. In this video, you'll also see a comparison compared with the previous generation GLE. So you'll see the difference between the old one and the facelift. Big thank you to Lucas Mercedes-Benz of Wolverhampton for helping me make this video possible. Now, the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to open the fuel flap. And what you'll need to do is get the key, press the unlock button, and then you'll be able to push this and then it opens up. And if you want to put more fuel into the car, all you do is pull this out, put it over there, and you can store it there. If you fuel the car, you can then put this back into this slot, turn it just like that. And then you've also got here your tire pressures and also what fuel the car takes. And this is just for your Mercedes-Benz breakdown, which I'll talk about a bit later on. And then once you're finished, just lock the car and you'll see that this now doesn't open. Now moving to the rear of the car, I can open the tailgate by holding this button at the bottom here, or I can also pull a handle just here, or I can also wave my leg just like that and that'll open the tailgate. And moving into the tailgate, you can see I've got the options to fold the seats. Now to fold the seats, uh, you can push the switches just like that. And that'll move the seats forward. I can also pull and then that will get the seats back up. I can then lower the height of the actual trunk. So just gets getting stuff in and out a bit easier. And I've also got my 12 volt socket and I've also got a carry hook and I've got it on both sides with a courtesy light and you can see the carry hook there. You've also got a net to just hide your belongings and this does come out as well by pulling on this side. You can pull and store that under here where you do have extra storage and because this car is fitted with the extra two seats, you'll notice that uh, I don't have as much storage down here. If you go for the five seat option, you will have more storage down here. And you won't have these seat belts as well. Your anchor points on the corners. And you've also got a first aid box, storage net. And down here, we've also got your tow eye. Sometimes the wheel bolt, locking wheel bolts are stored here. It might be just at the front and a high vis might be hiding at the front as well because I can't see it here. Now moving to the top, we've also got uh, switches here. Now this switch here will close the boot. If the, you press this button, this will close the boot and lock the car. This car does have the keyless technology. And you've also got, this car doesn't have a switch here. If it did, this would be for the tow bar where you can pull and push and a tow bar will come out electronically from the bottom there. Now, if I do this, wave my leg, just like that, you'll see now the boot will close, which is very, very useful. Another thing I should have showed you is you can adjust the height of the actual tailgate. And to do that, you just stop it where you want to let's say I stopped it there just press and hold this switch that beep is to say that this is the new position for this tailgate now if I want to set it back to the original height just push it to the top of the so you can see that's right at the top now all I'll do is to set this height again press and hold the switch that beep is now going to save that 
as the new opening position for the tailgate. Now all I'll do is press this switch and that can close the tailgate. Now this car does have the keyless technology so I can open the car manually with a key and I can lock the car or as long as the keys in my pocket I can open the car like so or I can lock the car like so you'll notice a little square on each of the door handles and that just allows me to lock the car if I need to if I want to unlock it just put my hand just like that so if you do see chrome door handles on a Mercedes that means that the car has keyless entry now opening the door we do have the child locks here as well and I to put the child locks on just put it up just like that put it down and the child locks are off moving inside we've greeted to the illuminated door sills and we've got the Burmester surround sound speakers you can adjust the seats which is very useful look at that lots of adjustability there you can even move the headrest electronically which is very very cool uh, you've got your electric windows here and if I move inside you've got your armrest here you've got your temperature controls for the rear passengers the car does have four zone climate control so my side can be a different temperature to the passenger which is very useful uh, you've got two USB-C's so the kids or anyone at the rear can charge their devices you've also got your storage net and you've got an area up here where you've got a grab handle courtesy light which is very useful and a hook as well to store uh, your jacket which is I think a very useful feature I should show you uh, you can also move the seats like so we've got access to the rear so these seats do go up now if you go for the hybrid model these seats are actually manual operated so you don't get these electronic uh, controls now to fold the seats back you do have to hold it so I'm just going to hold that put it back into its original position so that's something to note if you do go for a hybrid in these you will get manual seats rather than electronic like on this car now I'm just going to move that back as well so to fold the seats you do have to go inside the car and press those switches you can see I just have to adjust that back using the switches on the door one thing to note is the car does have soft closing doors so if I don't close it properly the car will do it for me very useful now moving to the front again we're greeted to the Mercedes-Benz illuminated door sills let's go inside now I'm inside the car what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how to start the car so you just push the brake press the switch there that will start the car up and it's a very cold day so I have got the heated seats on now to adjust the seats you can adjust like so and they're proper switches as well which is nice you don't get that on new other Mercedes as well nice to have those switches still there uh, you've got heated and cooled seats you can switch them on just like so switch them off just like that I can control the left side of the seats as well so I can adjust my passenger seats if I need to you can see there's lots and lots of adjustability there you can even adjust the headrest from here as well now if you do want to adjust the headrest a bit more there is a switch just here and if you push that you can then pull and adjust the headrest just like that so you can see you can adjust it just like that 
Now, once you've adjusted the electric seats, you can adjust the electric steering. You've got a toggle here, which you can press like so, and that adjusts the steering. And once you're happy, just press the M button, press a number, and now that beep is to say that that seating position is now saved. Moving down, uh, we've got the switches to lock and unlock the car. Moving down, uh, I can adjust the mirrors and all I'll do is select which side I want to control and then I can adjust the mirrors. I've got the electric windows as well and if I press this button up here that'll fold the mirrors. If I press it again that will unfold the mirrors which is a standard feature. One useful tip as well is to adjust the mirrors when you reverse is engage reverse. I'll show you how to do this properly in a sec. But you'll notice I've put the car into reverse. The mirror hasn't gone down on the left hand side. Now what I'm going to do is select the mirror on the left hand side and now I'm going to push it all the way down and I'm going to say that that is where I want my mirror to be. Now if I put the car into park that mirror should go up in a moment. Put the car into drive just in case. And you'll see now that mirror is going back up. So that's a very useful feature. Now, if I engage reverse, you'll see that mirror will dip down. That just makes parking this car a bit easier. Now I'll show you some other really useful features, including the how to use the camera very, very shortly. Just gonna put the car back into park. Now moving down. Now this switch is to open the rear tailgate and all you do is pull that switch. You get a little warning there to say that that's open and it opens up. Now as long as the car's running, if I push that switch, you'll see that the tailgate will now close and the warning on the dash is removed. Now. If you have a plug-in hybrid, then you'll have another switch there. And that is the only way to open the fuel flap for the car. If you do have another switch, you have to press, I think you have to pull it. Then after a moment, the fuel flap will open up. Now the reason it takes a moment is sometimes if you don't use the petrol engine on a hybrid, then pressure can build up in the fuel tank and what the car will do is depressurize it for you so it's making it safe for you to open the fuel cap now moving up we have also got the light controls here so i would recommend having an auto but you can put your side lights on you can put the full beams full lights on it if you need to uh, you can put on the lights from here as well and then you can adjust the brightness of the screen here as well. Changing the brightness will only work when the lights are on. Now this switch is your handbrake. Now if you push it that will put it on and if you pull it that will release it. Now if I push the handbrake you can see the light is on. If I pull that will release it. So push to put it on. Now I'm going to show you how to actually engage the car into drive. And you'll notice at the moment it's in park. Now if I push this all the way down, the car is now in drive and the number is just telling you what gear you're in. And if I press the accelerator pedal, you'll see the handbrake automatic releases. So that's a very useful feature. If I touch it just slightly, that will put the car into neutral. But if you push all the way up, you'll now see the car is gone into reverse and then the reverse camera is revealed to you. So here with the reverse camera, you can adjust all the different camera angles that you wanna see. So I can see the front, I can see the side of the car, I can set it to auto, so it'll automatically figure out what camera I need. And then you can also see, you'll see these little dots as well. 
Now the first dot is the recommended space and what you should leave uh, in between cars or a wall and it just allows enough access for anyone with a wheelchair to go past. So if you see that dot, that's just the recommended space to leave between a car or a wall. You can see as well, I've got the sensors on the front picking up what's at the front. Now if I reverse that, you'll see the sensors change. So you can see around the car sensors. If I reverse, you'll notice as I get closer to the wall, the sensors start changing. And that's just telling you what what's happening, what the sensors are picking up. So that's saying it's getting closer, it's turning yellow, it's now turning amber. And I'm not gonna lie, that's the closest I wanna get to because that red line is to say that's the end of the car. So if you go past that red line, you're actually hitting the ball. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna put the car back in drive. And that's it. I'm away from the wall. The sensors turn blue. Uh, you can switch off the parking sensors here as well. If you press this switch, that will now save this position. It'll automatically uh, get the cameras on. So this is a really useful feature if you've got a awkward driveway to get on. You can always press that button and it'll always remember to put your cameras on just to make your life a bit easier when it comes to parking. Now this button up here, if you press that, will do the auto park feature. So this car can do parallel parking and reverse bay parking, which is really useful. Check out the playlist. I think it's on that corner there and you'll be able to see a video. I think I've done it on an A-Class using the auto park feature. Let me know in the comments if you find that useful. I personally love using that feature. Now you don't have to engage reverse to use the parking sensors. You actually do have a switch down here. So you can press that button and I'll automatically get this screen up for you. Now, once you're finished, you can put the car into park. Now, all I'll do is push the silver button here and you'll notice the car's gone into park. And then when I switch off the car, the handbrake will come on automatically. So that's a really useful feature to have as well. So I always recommend before you leave the car, just make sure the car's in park and the handbrake light is on, then you can leave your car. While the car's in drive and you're driving, and when you come to a stop, just gently stop. And then when you push the brake, you'll see the hold function light come on. And that now will hold the car. You can let go of the brakes and the car will hold that for you. And when you're ready to go, just press the accelerator pedal and then you can go. And you'll notice the hold function light is gone. It's a really useful feature. Please ignore the check low beam setting warning. I will show you a bit later on on how to switch that off. Now moving on to the controls on the steering wheel. So I've shown you how to use the gear stalk. Here are your controls for your indicators. And you've got your full beam by flashing just like that. And if I push forward, you'll see the automatic lights. And this is for your automatic full beams. So if you do want to use that feature, just push forward. And then if you want to remove it, just push forward just like that. That gets rid of it. You've got your automatic wipers. And the three dots means it's a slow automatic mode, a quicker automatic mode. And then if you turn it all the way around, that's just your manual mode. And then if you push this, that will clean the windscreen. Push this one, that will clean the rear screen. So if I push that forward, you can see that will just clean that for me. And if I press this one, I'll just give it a quick wipe instead of uh, getting water on the rear screen. So you've got those controls there. You can change the gears here as well, manually if you want to. So plus is to go up a gear and minus is to go down a gear. So when you do put the car into drive, when you press the up button as you're driving, you'll notice it goes to M1. And as you're driving, that'll go, if you press that, it'll go M2, M3, M4, M5, M6, M7, 8, and nine. It's got nine gears. And if you press this one, that'll go down a gear. If you want to go back into auto mode again, just push all the way down and it'll put it 
back into auto for you. You've also got some other controls on the actual steering wheel. If you push forward, that's got your horn there. Now this side controls mainly the options on that screen. These buttons here mainly control this screen. Now what I'll do is I'll first show you what the, this side does. And if I push, I can then do different things here. I can also uh, see different things by scrolling like so. Now if I press the home button, so if I press the home button, I can now see different screens. So at the moment I'm looking at classic and here I can see all the different options under classic, including my sat nav, which I can actually set from here as well which is very useful, you can zoom in. If I want to reset the trip meter, I can just click on yes. And you can see that's gone to zero. I can reset this as well. You got loads and loads of options. And this is the screen that I prefer to use. You can move to sport mode as well. And that gives you a really sporty design. You can't really change anything on here. So it is kind of fixed understated just gives the car a more understated look and this is really useful when you're driving on the motorway it actually changes the theme on the other screen as well so you get a much more calmer relaxing view so it might be useful on a long motor journey motorway journey you got sport mode and you can see you get a slightly red theme if i put the car back into classic you'll notice it goes blue on that screen as well. Now, you've also got your sat-nav screen on here as well, so navigation. And again, you can set your destination. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, and you can even change the layout of this screen, which is very useful. And then I've also got assistance. Now this car is actually fitted with driving assistance package and what I'm going to do is I'm, if I get loads and loads of comments asking to see the driving assistance package on this car, I'll probably do a video on that. Press the home button. You've also got the off-road screen and this is uh, special for off-road models. So you can see the steering angle, you can see all that really cool information. You've also got the service screen and here you can see when the next service is due, if the tire pressures are all right and if you need to do anything basically. So you've got all the information there. Now if I put the car back into classic and what you'll notice is when the car is being driven, so if I start the car up, you'll always have the top You'll always have the digital speed up there. Check out my other video on the top right corner where I show you how to use the normal cruise control and speed limiter. And you'll always have at the bottom, you've got your how much range the fuel the car has. You'll also have how much fuel the car has. Where you see the fuel symbol, you'll see a little arrow pointed to the right. That means that my fuel flap is on the right hand side. So just in case you've forgotten where your fuel flap is, you can just look here and it's on the right for me. Uh, you will have, always have your time here and then your parking brake and the P that is your auto park feature. So right now that is on. That's why it's displayed there. And then you've got your outside temperature and then the C there. That means that this car is in comfort mode and I'll show you how to change your driving modes a bit later on. And then power and charge. That's just showing you what the electric motors are doing on the car. Now back to the steering wheel. Here you can adjust the cruise control and speed limiter. So you've got that there. And you can also change from cruise control to speed limiter. Again, that's for your cruise control and speed limiter. And on this side, you can control what's on this screen. So if I press the home button, it will always take me to the main screen, just like that. I can uh, push down as well, and that'll take me to navigation. 
If I press the back button, that'll take me back to this screen. If I need to answer calls, decline calls, I can. I can adjust the volume here as well. And if I push, I can also mute whatever's uh, on the actual stereo. If you press this button, that's for your Mercedes Me. And then this button is for your favorites. So you can customize your favorites and set new favorites if you want to, which is really, really cool. Now you don't have to use the controls here. You can actually touch the screen if you want to. So you do have that option. Or you can use the touchpad and you'll notice I can press back here. I can even skip songs here. And I've also got the home button here as well. So if I need to go on to something such as navigation, I can. And I think having a touchpad is really, really useful. A lot of models in the Mercedes range don't have this anymore. Also this hand rest is quite nice to use. Just to rest your hand while you're using this. Hey Mercedes, heated seats on. I'm switching on the seat heating. Instead of me pressing the button, you can actually tell Mercedes what to do. So you don't have to press any buttons or touch the screen if you don't want to. Hey Mercedes, heated seats off. Seat heating is turned off. The voice system does eventually learn your voice, so keep using it and it will get better and better as it learns your voice. Now before I forget, you do also have the head-up display and to get to head-up display, you just press the home button, push all the way up and you've got your head-up display and you'll be able to see that on the screen. And in here you can adjust what you want to see. You can see I've got into sport mode. That's your minimal view. And you've got your standard view. And you've even got off-road view, which shows you extra information on off-roading. Uh, you've got your eco display. You can also change the brightness and change the height if you want to. And then you can also switch it off from here as well. So if I want to, I can switch it off. If I want to put it back on, just go onto the screen and head up display appears there. So if I want to go back, just press the home button. That takes me back. And if I want to go back to head up display, just press home, go all the way up. And then I've got my head up display. How cool is that? It's really useful as well. You get your sat nav information on the screen as well, on your head up display as well. And as you drive in, let me show you. You even get uh, your parking sensors up here on the screen, which is really, really useful. I love this feature. If you want to learn how to connect Apple CarPlay to the GLE, you can watch the part two video or I have done a separate video, which is around five to 10 minutes, and that'll show you how to connect your phone if you just want to see that specific part. The video will also show you how to connect through Bluetooth if you don't want to use Apple CarPlay. Apple CarPlay is really, really useful. And if I press the home button, you can see I can still use MBUX as well as Apple CarPlay. If I want to get to Apple CarPlay, just select that up there. And I've also got Apple CarPlay right at the end. Next, I'm going to show you how to use the sat nav. And all you do is click on navigation and then you can enter a postcode just up here. Now, I always recommend putting a postcode in. So you can put in WV24HD. And you can see it's popped up there. Give that a click. And now, I can actually click on let's go and that will then take me to my destination. I could have chosen routes as well to see all the different options of routes to get to my destination. I didn't want to do that. And you can also see what's in the vicinity as well. You'll notice. Please proceed to the highlighted. That was route. muted. Now the sat nav is talking. And when the sat nav talks, then you can actually adjust the volume of the sat nav. So when the sat nav talks, that's when you can adjust the volume. Please proceed to the highlighted route. You see that? I've just adjusted it. Please proceed to the highlighted route. Now, you can also change the layout to 2D. 
and all the different versions of the map. If I click that, I can see what streets are next, all of that information. And then you'll notice with MBUX, uh, you will get little prompts down here, just suggesting what you might want to do next. So now if I click this button up here, then I'll end the destination. If I click where to, you can see that's popped into my previous destinations. If I give that a click, I can actually reveal more information. I can set this as a favorite. You can save it as a work or a home address. Now, I would recommend not saving it as a home address or even a work address if you have keys for home and work as well. Only because if someone was to steal your car, they'll also have the keys to your home or your workplace. So I would recommend just saving it as a favorite and then that'll pop into your favorites. Now you can also share this destination with other people with the use of a QR code. Press the back button if you want to go to the last page you're on. Now if you want to see where your favorites are, just click on the icon there, click on favorites, and you can see they've popped into your favorites. And if you need to delete that entry, you can as well. So you've got that option there. And you can also send destinations from your phone to the car if you want to. It's probably quicker for you just to type it in. Sometimes it can be a bit laggy. Now, basically the car has got its own full 3G and 4G SIM card in. So it will try and do that for you. You can Bluetooth and hotspot your phone if you want to, which is very useful. And then you can also uh, avoid certain toll roads if you need to. You can set that in the car as well. I'm happy with that. One of my top tips when using SatNav is to say, Hey Mercedes. How can I help? Previous destination. Please say the destination. One. Let's go. You can see that's a quick way. If you want to use a previous destination, that's a quicker way I find of using the sat-nav. Now phone I use, you can actually access Apple CarPlay from there as well, which is very useful. The radio app as well, if I give that a click, you can scroll all through the different radio stations. If you want to see a list of the radio stations, you can. And you'll notice a little star. So if you want to save a radio station as a favorite, just go on to the radio station that you want and click on the star and I'll save it into your favorites. You can also adjust the radio by pressing these buttons here and you've got some other information if you need it. Uh, that's for your traffic information. And then you can adjust the sound settings as well. So you can do that here. You can change it to surround and pure. You can change the equalizer, the balance and fader. You can even focus where you want the sound. You've got AM radio as well, which is quite nice. You can set the radio announcements to be on or off. Even search for a radio station if you need to. Or you've got the option of going to your favorites and you've got all your favorites hiding here. And if you maybe don't want BBC Radio 2 to be a favorite, you can just click on the star and it's removed as a favorite. So if you see the star, it's very intuitive. You can just click on it. You don't have to be in this specific uh, radio part. And you can see you can also delete or even edit. So if you want to change a position, you can just like so. And you click on the tick and that's save that. That's how you use the radio. Now you've also got media. If I give that a click, you can connect your other devices through Bluetooth to here, Apple CarPlay. You can connect a USB stick as well. And again, you've got access to settings here as well as if needed. Uh, you've also got apps and you've got your Mercedes Me app. Now I'll explain a bit more about Mercedes Me a bit later on. Uh, you've got the dash cam feature as well 
and this is where it will store photos or possibly video of any incidents that's happened with the car. So this car does have guard 360 protection, which means if someone wants to hit into your car, maybe when it was parked, hopefully the, pic the cameras in the car pick that up for you. Uh, you can also browse the internet on here if you need to. Um, I have done a separate video on how to do that, so check that out in the playlist. And then Energizing Coach, that's quite a nice feature to have. Uh, you did used to get that on an S-Class and now you can get that on uh, the GLE, which is very cool. And then you've also got the gallery and this will store any photos from the dash cam. Uh, what I would recommend is making sure you've got your USB memory stick uh, in the car to use this feature properly. Now, show, oh, show, show you comfort. Now, comfort is really useful. This car has the massage seats, so I've got all the different massage settings that I can choose. I'm going to do classical, classic massage, click on the play button. And that's going to give me a nice massage. Now, one thing I forgot to mention was because this car's got the heated seats, your armrests on both the door and in the middle of the car for the front passenger and driver, they do heat up, which is really, really cool. Now, seat kinetics you can adjust the lumbar, the side bolsters, uh, the heat setting as well, so you can really customize how that how that works and you'll notice where you can actually set the heating which is very cool so you can adjust how you want that heat to spread which is very nice now position seat automatically this is a really useful feature so what I'll do is if I set my seating position, let's say I'm 5, 7, and you can set it from inches or centimeters. If I click on start positioning, now the seats and the steering wheel will adjust to the correct driving position. How useful is that? I love that feature. You can reset everything if you need to. Ambient lights, you've got 64 different colors to choose from, and you can choose from a basic color or a multi color. And you can change the brightness here as well, and you can set it so certain zones can only get the ambient lights to work. So you've got that customizability, which is very nice. I'm just going to leave it back the way it was. And then effects, you can customize this if you want to. And then energizing comfort, you can set a certain mood for the car as well, which is quite nice. If I put it on refresh, just changes the mood of the car more relaxing you can hear the sound I think very interesting it's 10 minutes S class tech in your GLE very cool I'm just gonna stop that very nice very cool let me know if you want me to do more in-depth video and show you all the different uh, energizing comfort modes. Let me know if you'd even use that. Uh, you've got Apple CarPlay, you've also got the off-road mode. And this is, because this car's an off-roader, you get this information. So you can see what steering angle you've got, the suspension, your altitude, all of that really cool stuff. You got your hill dancing control, put the car into manual mode if you want to, switch off the traction control, switch off the parking sensors, 
and this button is your see-through uh, mold as well so this is a very useful feature let me just show you how that works now if I put the car into drive you'll see if I move forward the car can see through the bonnet how cool is that the car is using the cameras to give this effect you've also got your score so if you do do off-roading you can actually score yourself now I think there's another mode another option I think it's like off-road mode or something like that uh, where you can actually you may have seen some GLEs going up and down or GLS is going up and down and to change the settings uh, for that is here but my car doesn't have that where it can bounce up and down and that bouncing up and down is really really useful especially when it's snowed uh, it can actually get you out of the snow it's not there just for fun it's actually designed to help you when it comes to serious off-roading if I press this button I'm just giving you a score I've got that's not really being used so that's why it's not displaying if I click the home button, you've got info. Here we have the engine information, vehicle information, and even consumption information. And then you've also got your other settings for the car. I'm not going to go too in-depth in this, but you can see you can customise a lot of different things. Check out the part two video to learn more about these settings. You can find that video in the description or in the playlist for the GLE. can customize the uh, lights as well I'm just going to put that on automatic there you go. automatic low beams on as well oh, very nice and then you've got the favorites option as well which you can customize you can set up your own favorites if you want to and notifications you've got certain functions as well if you leave anyone inside the car, make sure you switch this part off, the interior protection, and then you can actually lock the car using the key and the alarm will not go off. So you can add a favourite as well. You can add all sorts of different favourites if you want to. I'd probably have a massage seat function set up. Now you've got your temperature controls and you can adjust the temperature like so and you'll notice the ambient lights change colour as I go up and down to decrease the temperature red being hot, blue being cold and you can also adjust the passenger side as well and you'll notice it's 90 degrees for the passenger if I want it to be the same click on sync and now both sides have 22 degrees now Mercedes-Benz actually recommend that your temperature in the car is 22 degrees. Uh, you've also got the AC button. Now I would actually recommend having that on. If you do insist on switching it off, I'd recommend you switch it on at least once a month just to make sure that's working correctly. Now this button will get rid of any smelly air in, in the car, which is useful. This button will clean the rear windscreen on a really cold day. You've got your hazard lights as well and the passenger airbag uh, it says off at the moment because no one's sat in the passenger side uh, this button here will clean the front windscreen very useful on a cold day now I'll show you auto in a sec but you can adjust the blower speed here as well up or down to decrease one thing that I recommend leaving in auto mode and what will happen is the air in the cabin will distribute as recommended by the car and what I find is you won't get a misty screen if you use the auto feature now you've also got the menu button and the menu button allows you to adjust the settings on the touch screen if you want to you can unsync here switch it off here and you can adjust where you want the air to distribute but I would just recommend leaving in auto and then you can also adjust the second row of seats as well, the temperature there, or I can switch it off. And then the air quality as well, you can see what the air quality is like in the car. Uh, ionization is currently on, now I'd actually recommend that. Cleans the inside of the car, it's very, very useful to have that. 
very good, especially if you're allergic. And then the air freshener, I'll show you where to top up your air freshener vial in a moment, is in the glove box. Now moving down, we also have some more controls. Uh, you can adjust the volume here. If I push this, uh, that will put the, put the car into mute. And if I hold it down, I then get the option to uh, make sure the display is off or I can uh, completely shut off the system if I want to. If I click on that, that'll just take me to my sat nav. If I click this, that'll take me to my radio or media. This will take me to my telephone. Uh, this car has got the dynamic control switches here. So if I push up or down, you can see I can put the car into comfort, eco. And when you're driving around locally, you can keep in comfort. If you're on the motorway, uh, it may be worth putting the car into sport mode where it'll hold the gears longer. You might find that it actually drinks less fuel. Uh, what will happen though is your steering wheel will feel a bit heavier. Now comfort mode puts everything in comfort mode including the suspension, how the gearbox works and also the ESP system. Eco mode will actually make sure the car tries to drink as less fuel as possible. Even your AC will not work as strong as it maybe could. And then off-road mode, you can activate the drive program here if you want to. And then you've also got individual, where you can, if you click the cog, customize how you want the gearbox to feel, how you want the suspension to feel, the steering as well. And then you can also set the ESP. Now if I click this button here, that will allow me to use the cameras. And again, I can use the auto park feature. If I press this button, that allows me to just use some main functions that I might need to quickly use, including the interior protection. So if you do want to leave someone in the car and lock them in, press that. Now you've also got the star button here. If I press that, you've got your favorites, which you can add further favorites if you want to. Now the actual touchpad, you can write stuff on here if you want to. If you press this button, that allows you to change your radio station if you want to. And then I've shown you what the home button and back button does. Now you can also pull this down and that will actually lower your car. So if I press up, you'll see a little symbol up here telling you that the car's rising. I can actually feel it rising, which is quite nice. Now moving down from the temperature controls, you can also store some items here. So you can do wireless charging in the car, USB-C connections here. And you've also got the heated and cooled cup holders. So you may notice that there's actually some rubber missing here. I think someone's stolen this out of this uh, demonstrating vehicle, which is very naughty. Now my iPhone 13 Pro Max does fit in here, which is very useful. Now you've got some more storage down here. So if I push this, you've got your USB-C connection and you've got some really big storage here. I'm not sure what this part is. Let me know in the comments if you know what that is. And then you can put coins maybe even a small pen there and then you've also got the glove box which is lockable so you just get the key i'll show you in a sec and then you've got your where you put put your perfume vial you can put that there and you've got storage for the manual the locking wheel bolt and the high vis is there as well and you've even got a place to store a pen which i think is really really useful now this is the key for the car and what you can do is push this and the key will pop out just like that and then you can use this key and put it into the glove box to lock and unlock. When you're finished just put the key, put that back in just like that and there you go it's nice and secure. Just give it a quick pull just to make sure that's on.
Now moving to the top, we have got some controls up here. We've got the reading light. Switch here to switch off the lights when you open the doors. Uh, your full lights to switch on all the lights. Rear lights, reading light for the driver. And then these buttons, I'll show you that in a sec. Uh, this button here will actually use the electric blind. So if I push like so, you can see the electric blind will close. And if I want to open it, just push like so. so that opens it just a bit. Oh. So if I push that just like that, that will actually open the blind. And then you can actually open the electric panoramic sunroof by pulling as well. There you go, let's open the electric panoramic sunroof. If I want to close it. Very nice. Mercedes Me. Now that is for your breakdown cover for this car. If you press this button in an emergency, you've got your breakdown cover. If you press that button, what you'll do is give permission to Mercedes-Benz to let them know where you are. And then they can check over the phone some main diagnostics and then they can advise you on what to do. Now this is really useful if you get a puncture or if for whatever reason you break down, just press that button and then someone through the speakers will speak to you. So that's pretty cool. The car's got its own 3G or 4G SIM card. So that's really, really useful in emergency. Now, if for whatever reason that switch doesn't work, you can pull them directly. And what you do is open the door this is the number for the breakdown service, which you will find in the door sill. Okay. I would recommend getting connected to Mercedes Me. Now, when you buy the car from a Mercedes Benz dealer, usually you will get connected to Mercedes Me. Now, if that doesn't happen, maybe you bought the car from another dealer that's not Mercedes Benz, then what you can do is go to your local dealer and provide them the logbook and your driving license or your passport just to prove that that is your car. So your registration documents is your logbook. If you've leased the car through maybe a leasing company, then you probably won't have a logbook. What you'll need to do is ask your leasing company to get you connected to Mercedes Me. Now, if they're not willing to do that for you, what you'll need to do is get permission from them. So you will need written confirmation. Usually email is suffice and that confirmation will need to be given to your local Mercedes-Benz dealer who will then connect your car. Again, you'll need that email or letter as proof that they're happy for you to use Mercedes Me. And then you'll just need to provide your driving license or a passport just to prove that it's you. And that's how you get connected to Mercedes Me. Now, you've got the SOS switch. If you press that, again, the car will automatically call the emergency services for you and i've accidentally pressed that if you press the sos button that will call the emergency services for you someone from the speakers uh, will check if you're okay if they don't get a response they'll just send everyone out to you they'll send the ambulance police and the fire brigade now if the airbags ever go off then it, the sos system will automatically work without your permission again they'll speak to you through the speakers of the car and if they don't get a response from you uh, they'll just send everyone out police, fire brigade and ambulance, which is a really useful feature in an emergency. I should have mentioned something about the breakdown. Now uh, the breakdown recovery is complimentary for three years when you buy the car from new. As long as you get the car serviced every year from a Mercedes-Benz dealer, every year that you get the car serviced, you'll get an additional breakdown cover for that year. So that's really, really useful. And then you can do this up to 30 years, that breakdown cover. Usually for UK, we can drive in the UK and in Europe as well. So if you do get a puncture, I recommend you use that breakdown recovery. Next, I'm just going to show you how to open the bonnet. So to open the bonnet, you have got a lever here somewhere. There it is, that red one. Pull that. And then just go to the front. And there should be a little catch there. Pull that, pick it up, and there you go, you've got access to the front. That looks like carbon fibre, I don't know if that is carbon fibre, but it's pretty cool. 
Here's your six cylinder engine. And if you want to top up any fluid, you've got it here. If you need to charge your battery, you've got your positive there and your negative there. And you need to change oil there. You've got that there. You can top up fluid here as well. You probably won't need to top these up. But what I would recommend is get your car service from a Mercedes-Benz dealer. And after six months, just get a vehicle health check done and they'll top up any fluids for you that the car needs. That's what I would recommend. Now, if you want to close this, just, that was the lever that I was opening up, that was the catch that was opening up. Now, closing it, just make sure you put your hand on the center, push all the way down. Don't have to do it gently, just make sure you put enough force and then you'll find that this closed properly. It's perfectly aligned when you do that. Please subscribe as it helps me and the channel grow and create even more content. Please like this video. Also comment if you have any suggestions or questions. Check out the GLE playlist for more videos related to the GLE, including a full video on what specification this car has. Some of the videos in the GLE playlist will be of the A-Class or C-Class or other models, but the features will be the same. So hopefully it helps you out too. There are videos on how to connect your phone to the car, how to use the self-parking feature, and even videos on how to use the cruise control and speed limiter. There is a new thanks feature. If you want to donate to the channel, then please feel free to use this feature and any money raised from YouTube will be used to buy more equipment. Thanks for watching.